Are you a foreign physician and planning to work in Sweden? If so, you probably know that the theoretical knowledge test, Kunskaps Proof, is the toughest hurdle in the path to obtaining Swedish medical license. Legitimation. My name is Seper Toedi and I successfully passed this catastrophical exam on my third attempt in September 2024. Today I want to share with you some of my insights and tips based on my experiences to help you to pass this exam much easier. So if you are looking to overcome this challenging obstacle, stay with me until then. By the way, I have already made another video about the overall structure of this exam and some stats about the pass rate. You can find the link here up. I highly recommend to check it out first. Even though it is in Persian, I have added detailed subtitle, so I think you can enjoy it. All right, let's dive into some golden tips to help us to pass this catastrophic exam. Let's get started. One. A. You must, I emphasize, you must study and analyze, analyze, analyze every single question of every single previous exams and every single choices of all the questions. This is a must. You need to thoroughly study and know all the topics that have been covered in previous exams. I mean, you should not only focus on the correct answers, but also you should figure out why the incorrect answers are wrong and in which context they could be correct. No, you might think this takes a lot of time. I might spend, for example, one hour and I can only manage to analyze five questions, but the answer is Yes, this is so, but you don't have any other option. And where can you find the questions of previous exams? There are a few websites that provide you the previous exams questions along with detailed explanations. And be careful, uh, most people tend to review previous exams uh, from the section of topic by topic, something that you know uh, as MNE for MNE. Be careful, MNE for MNE only covers the preclinical questions and the clinical questions are excluded even though it is extremely important. So be careful and ensure that you don't miss these questions. You should study the clinical questions of previous exams too separately. Don't forget it. Now a common question can arise here. Are these websites and their explanations enough? The answer is for the key and high frequency topics not at all. You need to obtain a much deeper and detailed understanding of these high frequency and key topics. I strongly recommend studying of these topics from Swedish material, Swedish resources, for example, internet medicine website. But which topics are we talking about? I mean, the diseases and subjects that are more prevalent specifically in Sweden. For example, in cardiology, MI and hypertension are very, very, very important. Or in pulmonology, asthma and COPD are very important. And subjects about geriatrics, addiction, alcohol, they are very important. So don't forget to study for these topics deeper and in more details from Swedish reference websites. Number three. Um, one common mistake so many people do is that they must study continuously without scheduling a proper reviewing session. What's the problem? After, for example, two months, and they have forgotten almost all they have read two months ago. This is a major error that wastes both your time and energy. So make sure to create a calendar. Write down which topics and which questions you have studies on a specific dates and plan specific times for reviewing them. For example, I personally created an Excel page and wrote down my progress every day. For example, I would write that today I have studied cardiology question 1 to 30 then I would schedule my first reviewing within 4 to 5 days and my second review within 12 to 14 days. This structured approach ensures that you retain what you have learned and what you have studied and makes your study time much more effective. Four. Swedish language skills. This is something that many, many candidates underestimate. I see many candidates that attempt the exam when their Swedish skills are at the level A2, B1. This is absolutely wrong. At least you must improve your reading skills significantly. This is very crucial for two main reasons. For A. 
If your Swedish is weak, you will find yourself misunderstanding the wording of many questions during the exam. That leads to incorrect answers. After the exam, you might realize that you knew the correct answer, but you couldn't understand the wording of the question. This can easily cost you four to five questions in the exam. For B. Besides, this exam lasts 7.5 hours. That is insanely long. To maintain focus throughout the exam, especially during the second half, you need to conserve your energy. If your Swedish is weak, you will spend a large amount of your energy only for understanding questions. This will leave you frustrated and exhausted, especially in the second half of the exam, causing you lose your focus and more questions. On the other hand, strong reading skills can help you to read the questions faster, so you complete each section faster, giving you the chance to have a short break before starting the next section. This is extremely important. This is exactly what happened to me. I finished both the clinical and preclinical parts 30 minutes earlier. As a result, I had enough energy to focus and understand the questions on the second half of the exam. What was the result? I answered to all questions of the article part correctly. All questions of article part. Number five, don't blame yourself. Please, 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 please. If you haven't passed the exam yet, don't blame yourself. This test is unbelievably unreasonable and failing it in no way reflects your competence or capability. This exam is extremely long. The topics lack clear prioritization. And as I mentioned in my previous video, it's unfair in many ways. Passing it often requires a large amount of luck. So don't lose your hope and most importantly, don't be too hard on yourself. Thank you very much for sticking with me until the end. I truly hope I was able to help you. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them on the comments and I'll make sure to respond. If you would like me to create more videos in English and share helpful insights, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and let me know in the comments what topics you would like me to cover in the next videos. With my great respects, I'm Dr. Sepet Tohidi.